The yen is bouncing sharply this morning off the key 150 level. Traders fear there has been intervention, but there's no confirmation yet. It's all about US dollar strength. As US bond yields keep on rising, with more good news on the US jobs front. That's coming up in our five things in five minutes. And then in our bonus deep dive, we hear the first part of Raymond Jung's analysis of the importance of the Hong Kong dollar's peg to the US dollar, which is about to hit a new milestone as an unbroken peg. October 1983, sounds like a long time ago, has been there for uh, 40 years that uh, the Hong Kong dollar peg with the US dollar has been a cornerstone for Hong Kong as an international financial center. But first, in 5 and 5 with ANZ, number one, the yen briefly fell through 150 early this morning and then rocketed back up to 147, triggering speculation that Japanese authorities have intervened to shore up the currency, all about hitting that 150 level, just as it did in September last year when the currency was last at that level. Remember, this is all about US dollar strength. It rose again overnight against a bunch of currencies because US Treasury yields, well, they're up again as well. Another 10 basis points to a fresh 16-year high of 4.79%. It's all about higher interest rates for longer. As a result, US stocks are down more than 1% in New York afternoon trade. There was news overnight of better than expected jolts, job openings data in the US labor market that helped fuel the rise in yields. All this US dollar strength also saw the Aussie dollar slide to 63 US cents this morning from 63.6 yesterday. It actually dipped to a low of 62.88 overnight. The Kiwi, it got hit too. It opened this morning at 59.05 US cents down from 59.4 yesterday. It also dipped under the big figure overnight. 58.8 in overnight trade was the low. Number two, the RBA held its cash rate unchanged yesterday at 4.1%, but with a hawkish tone, which was expected, it was the new governor, Michelle Bullock's first decision-making meeting in charge. And she didn't change much, says ANZ's head of Australian economics, Adam Boyton. The next meeting, though, might be more interesting. Well, there's certainly a chance that the uh, November meeting is more live. Uh, There's a couple of reasons for that. The first is the bank will have the quarterly CPI uh, for the September quarter. That comes out in late October. And then also when the board uh, sits down at the uh, the November board meeting, they'll have a complete forecast uh, refresh from the RBA staff. So that most recent quarterly CPI plus a full forecast update from the staff uh, certainly makes that November meeting live. Although at this stage, I I don't think the bank will be tightening in November. Number three, residential building approvals in Australia rose 7% in September, after falling 15% in the previous two months. However, this isn't necessarily a big turnaround, says ANZ Senior Economist for Australia, Adelaide Timbrell. Developer incentives continue to be undermined by higher building costs and tighter funding. We also know that even though building approvals rose 7%, they're still near a 10-year low. Housing lending, however, also rose 2.2% in the month, and we do expect this to continue to rise modestly as the housing shortage supports both housing prices, which were up 0.8% month-on-month in September, uh, and vacancy rates, you know, which stay low when there's a housing shortage, when there are no building approvals, and also makes it more appealing for investors who know that even if they are paying more in their mortgage, they're also definitely going to have a tenant. Number four, also from Adelaide, ANZ Roy Morgan Consumer Confidence for the last week ticked up a bit to 78.2. Now, this was not a strong result for confidence, which has been below the very weak 80 mark for the last six months, but was a little bit of an improvement on the last week. Encouragingly, inflation expectations have gone sideways, despite media coverage of the August monthly inflation data, which at 5.2% was way too high uh, and certainly provides a little upside risk to the inflation outlook. Number five, also in Australia, job ads data was steady in September, but up over the last quarter. That's according to ANZ Economist for Australia, Maddie Dunk. What we've seen is that job ads have increased 2.2% over the last three months. And 
That's been driven by increases in job ads in the healthcare and education sectors. So for jobs like doctors and nurses, but also in retail. And that might be a sign that businesses are starting to wind up for that pre-Christmas trading period. Now it's time for our bonus deep dive. ANZ's chief economist for Greater China, Raymond Yung, has put out a special research note on the Hong Kong dollar's peg to the US dollar on the eve of its 40th anniversary. Here's the first part of our two-part chat. In October 1983, sounds like you know, a long time ago, has been there for uh, 40 years that uh, the Hong Kong dollar peg with the US dollar has been a cornerstone for Hong Kong as an international financial centre. Look, because of this currency peg, you know, Hong Kong has been attracting a lot of global investors without worrying much about the currency exposure uh, to the city. Because the US dollar apparently, you know, in the past few decades been a global currency, a base currency, and it's a common denominator, you know, for uh, all the global investors. And that's why this Hong Kong dollar peg has been very important, not only to the city's role as the international financial center, but also a uh, symbol of globalization, riding on the fact that China has also opened up the economy for uh, four decades. How has it managed to stay? Because so many currencies that have pegged to the US dollar have been forced off that peg for some reason or another. I think the Hong Kong dollar peg is a bit different compared with other currency peg. Uh, other countries, for example, a much cited example is that Argentina used to run the currency peg without you know, to successfully operating for too long. And um, those currency uh, systems uh, typically collapse and follow um, the same faith of many uh, emerging markets, namely capital outflow that uh, has shocked the uh, currency system. But the uh, good things for Hong Kong dollars, because um, this peg is uh, primarily a token for global investor and global banks uh, that maintain a strong balance sheet in the city, you know, as an international financial center or the Asia hub, so that it's not easy to see capital outflow. And in fact, because of the strategic location in Hong Kong, because of the uh, strategic um, you know, relationship between uh, China with the rest of the world, this has been the, uh, a, 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 a very successful in the sense that uh, uh, many global in- investors park their fund in uh, Hong Kong and that makes this Hong Kong dollar peg uh, so solid. And after four decades, you know, the Hong Kong uh, Monetary Authority has already established their credibility because they don't actually really need to uh, intervene the market that much unless it touch the bond like uh, 785 and 75. And I'm not saying that they have not gone through a crisis situation before, but in every crisis, including um, Asia financial crisis uh, back in 1998 and also the uh, GFC, uh, 2008, that this uh, currency pack remained very, very solid uh, without any trouble, which means that the longer the pack is there, the higher the credibility, and it's not easy for global speculators to try to short the, the pack and the short Hong Kong dollar. So, um, and that's why it has taken a long time, almost 40 years, to establish this fortress. And uh, that's why um, Hong Kong dollar pegs, uh, uh, if there is a um, political wish to continue, there is no problem, you know, for the peg to stay, you know, forever, I would say. Raymond Yung there with part one of our two-part deep dive into the Hong Kong dollar peg. Tomorrow, Raymond looks ahead at how the peg could become even more important with the help of digital currencies and blockchain. I'm Bernard Hickey. That was 5 and 5 with ANZ for Wednesday, October the 4th. Catch you tomorrow with the latest from the RBNZ Decision Today. This podcast contains general information only, not investment advice. You should obtain advice for your personal circumstances before making any investment decisions. Please view the podcast disclaimer available via your media player or email.